I'm here with Dr. Marcelo Matos from Brazil. He's an oral maxillofacial radiologist. He's also a TMJ specialist down in Brazil. They actually have a specialty. Marcelo is going to be talking to us about things that are so out there. It's so amazing. Um, all these patients that we see that have orofacial pain or TMJ pathology problems, something's not right with their bite. They've got this nonspecific pain nobody can help them with. Marcelo does some things that I literally have never seen in North America. He and his mentor, Dr. Jorge Loretta, who will also be speaking at the CNO Symposium, you know, these guys, it's, it's genius what they're doing. Um, it's not a panacea, but nothing is, right? But this, this is something I'm adding to my own repertoire slowly over time. It's pretty complicated stuff. It's amazing stuff. And tonight, or right now, because for, for us, it's tonight, right, Marcel? <laughs> Um, I, I'm two, two hours ahead of you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is going to be it's almost a, 90, 930 p.m. Yeah, p.m. And here for me, it's a, what about 730? But my point is, for the next two to three hours, we're going to be talking about uh, TPS, TMJ pathology screening. Thank you, Dr. Marcelo Matos. Please take it away. I thank you. Thank you for the invitation. And it's an honor to, to be here speaking for this audience. That's why we are talking about temporomandibular pathology versus disorders. TPS, temporomandibular pathology screening. Any joint may be affected by trauma, infection, autoimmunity, by mechanical problem, what in our case involves occlusion, circulation, endocrine, metabolic, and tumors. All these can damage any joint in the body, in this case, any joint in the body, in our case, all these can generate damage to the joint. Traditional view of the TMD is basically because of this, let's say, classification called RDC TMD. And why we are going in, into this? Because without understanding this difference, this what seems to be a time difference actually is not. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass through all these. Uh, a little bit quicker because we have a, a deeper version in the Open Bite conference. Uh, it was updated in 2014, trying to correct these problems that was the classification. So let's get a little deeper in this problem in terms of classification based on this position, for example. For example, the rheumatic fever starts with an infection to the throat, and then it goes uh, to a autoimmune response that affects joints, heart, and also the brain. An infection case, a combo case with so all together, and at what age, what terrain, and for that, we start to measure things. So we have parameters that can be compared and we have documented results, including the failures. The failures is very important to measure. Why? Because next time you see the same data in a new, new patient, you start to understand that, whoa, maybe that patient, this new patient is similar to that patient uh, who I didn't have the result I wanted. So what are the tools we use for the differential diagnosis? Dr. Reti is my mentor, as Dr. Nick Yanius said in the beginning of this presentation. In 2009, we, we published this paper, Current Diagnosis of Temporomandibular Pathology, Structural Lesion, Neurofunctional Changes. All this together, for the structural lesion, you're going to have, uh, we're going to use imaging. Image is going to be the, the, the real thing real thing in terms of structural lesions. Area here had, has a necrosis of the bone. This is from a, an infection. As the patient's age, it's more difficult to solve a problem like that. Between you and the patient, something that my mentor likes to say. I like to say also, you need to align patient expect, expectation with reality. In Dr. Nick Yanius has the saying, make the patient on their problem. What is not from the TMJ? Sometimes the patient may have pain 
on the face that comes from the cervical. And you can see synovial inflammation, for example. But if you use any kind of orthotic without correcting, or at least the orthotic that's not targeted, uh, it's not intended to correct orthopedic problem, you may raise your rate of unsuccessful treatment with orthotic. And the patient end up with that open bite. In a frontal view, pathological from the patient, healthy from other case for reference. As you can see, the left temporalis is almost not working. Severe uh, TMJ degeneration with this bird beak. It should look something just like that, with this white contour line. This is not an open bite from uh, thumb, from uh, pacifier. This is an open bite because of a combat degeneration. In this, an asymmetry. Class two profiles uh, respond the same way. Not all open bites respond to the same way to the treatment. And that's why we need to get our vision a little bit better. Two different MRIs showing the progression of a damage. You can have an idea of progression and activity. The decompression test. The decompression test I published together with Liareta, Dr. Liareta, in 2011, I think, yes, it was, the electromyographic evaluation of vertical dimension, the Liareta TMJ decompression test. In terms of backwards and upwards to the teeth of the, 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 the fossa, not working during clenching. That means better blood flow and less pain. And with both cotton roll, the response is better than here, but not better than here for this particular muscle, for example. Uh, the T's can all together with DMG, or, or what I'm not showing this moment. And after the T's can and DMG, you can go for the jaw tracking. The combination, you have the th it is three upper line here, showing you movements, and the other line showing you muscle recruitment. Processors at this moment here, what is not the best reading we could have. What do we do with this? What to do? Actually, we have the opportunity to be precise on our diagnosis and see what no one else sees. Uh, the same case, this, this is like the, the case I uh, used to explain the EMG at the beginning of the TPS. Then this is another case. There's a lot of information here. For example, this uh, area in red that is thicker in here, it means that is a problem inside the joint that is giving some kind of nociception to the system, to the brainstem. Why? If you want to see some other types of problem, go see the open bite conference. I, should, I think I showed some autoimmune cases there, infection cases there also, I think. Once you do one, two, three times, boom, you have it. If you want to do things without relapse, if you want to be able to measure things, you have to start learning how to use these metrics that are objective, like the MR, the CT, putting numbers to things, the nuclear medicine. I mean, Marcelo's going to go over all of that. The EMG, the jaw tracker, et cetera, all these combinations. It's amazing stuff.